God, it's late. Okay, time to switch off the laptop and go home. <sighs> Where's my cell phone? It's not under the files. Stay calm, Miranda. This desk is a mess. No wonder I always lose things. It's not in the drawer. Aha! There you are, behind the laptop where I can't see you, of course. Oh, I can't leave everything like this. Okay. Pens everywhere, and when I need one, I can never find one. They can go in the drawer. These papers are important. Okay. Staple them all together or I'll end up losing something important. Okay. Stapler. Great, I'm out of staples. Okay, make a note for Linda. Buy staples. I'll just use this paper clip for now. All right. That's a little better. I can actually see the desk again. May I come in, Mrs. Cunningham? Yes, of course, Linda. Come in, come in. Miss Adams is here. Miss Adams? Who is she? An American woman from the Isle of Wight. She says it's her first appointment. Mm. It says here she's got a hotel in Coes, and she wants to file a lawsuit against a company called Beautiful Bathrooms. She purchased some faulty showers from them for her hotel. Oh, yes. I remember Miss Adams. Send her in. Miss Adams, this is Miranda Cunningham. How do you do? How do you do? Miranda? Yes. And this, of course, is Linda, my secretary and precious personal assistant. Pleased to meet you. And you. Thank you, Linda. So, as I said on the telephone, I have got a hotel in Coes, and I have recently changed the bathrooms. Oh, what's the name of the hotel? Oh, please, have a seat. Hello and welcome to your business session. My name is Anthony and my job in these workouts is to make sure you practice your language skills. Today we're looking at formal introductions and office related vocabulary. Are you ready to start? First of all, do you remember what Linda says when she's reporting to Miranda about her appointment with Miss Adams. She reads some information about the lady and says, it says here she's got a hotel. We use this expression, it says here that, or he, she says that, when we want to report information. Finally, Miranda remembers who Miss Adams is and she receives her. Linda introduces them. Miss Adams, this is Miranda Cunningham. We usually use this is to introduce people to each other. And they shake hands and say, how do you do? How do you do? Sounds funny, doesn't it? They both ask a question, how do you do, but neither replies. Well, that's actually because it's a formality. When we say how do you do, we are not really asking how the other person is. It's just a formal way of greeting someone. And when Miss Adams and Linda shake hands, they say, pleased to meet you, and you. This is another quite formal way of greeting a person you meet for the first time. But 
Please have a seat and we can have a look at some vocabulary now. Miranda tidies up her desk a little because it's really messy and I'm sure we all know it's hard to find things when everything is in disorder. In fact, she has trouble finding her cell phone or mobile phone as they call it in Britain. So, she's got a desk and the desk has some drawers. Where does she look for her cell phone? She looks in the drawer. But it's not there. She looks under some files. But it isn't there either. Where is her phone? It's behind her laptop, her portable computer. So, she decides to tidy up. What objects does she mention? Pens. Stapler. We use it to attach various sheets of paper together. But she's out of staples. So do you remember what she uses instead? Those little clips we use to hold paper and documents together? Good. Yes. Paper clips. Great. Well, that's all we have time for today. See you next time for another training session. Goodbye. Well, we have a good working relationship, but I am just the secretary. And Miranda constantly reminds me that she's the boss. I'm always here early because I absolutely have to clock in by 9 o'clock. So I usually get to work around 8.45 just in case. But Miranda arrives late all the time and nobody says anything of course no I don't work fixed hours and sometimes I stay in the office after work because we have to meet deadlines so it can be very stressful it's okay but most of the time I do routine tasks I file documents answer the phone reply to emails so I'm usually stuck behind a desk it can be <sighs> Good morning, Linda. Good morning. I never managed to get here on time. Traffic is so bad this time of the morning. I'm surprised you're always so punctual. You get to work early. What time do you leave your house in the morning? Usually around 20 past 8. I take the tube. It's quite quick. But once or twice a week I drive to work, so I leave the house around 8 o'clock because there can be Linda, a lot... Linda, do we have today's newspaper? Yes. Read me my horoscope. Let's see what the week is like. Scorpio, work. Control your sharp tongue today. Try not to be too critical and severe. Is As there anything about love? Love. You usually say things that upset or offend people. What? Do you think I'm tactless? Do you want me to continue? No. No, thank you, Linda. Just a cup of coffee, thanks. Hello. Here we are for another business workout. Today, we are exploring the vocabulary we use to talk about daily work routines. Linda is on the phone with a friend in Miranda's office and she tells her friend about her job and her boss Miranda. She says she and Miranda have a good working relationship. Well, that's important. It's terrible to have a bad working relationship with someone, especially your boss. But there are some things she's not too happy about. Let's see. Miranda isn't very punctual. 
she's usually late, whereas Linda gets to work on time. Actually, she arrives early because she has to clock in before nine. To clock in means to register your arrival at work. In many companies, this is done electronically. She also says she doesn't work fixed hours, which means she hasn't got a regular timetable. It often changes depending on how much work she has to do. Sometimes she stays at work until late because they have to meet deadlines. That means they have to finish some work before a certain day. And do you remember all the things she does at work? She files documents. That means she puts and keeps all the documents in order. She answers the phone and replies to emails. These are all things she does at her desk in the office. So she says, I'm usually stuck behind a desk. It's a way of saying you don't move around very much and you find it quite boring. You know, they're just routine tasks. Do you remember when Linda reads Miranda's horoscope? What's your star sign? Miranda's a scorpion, and it says she has a sharp tongue. That means she's critical and severe when she speaks. It also implies that she is tactless. Tactless means you speak in a way that offends people. Poor Miranda. She doesn't seem very happy but it looked like Linda agrees with the horoscope. That's it for now. Keep practicing your English, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning, doctor. Please, call me Ray. John, let's just have a little chat first, shall we? Okay. As this is our first session, I'd like to ask you a few questions about yourself to get an idea of your history, your situation. Okay, fine. What is your full name? John Little. How old are you? I'm 45. Marital status? Sorry? Are you married, uh, divorced? No, I'm not. I haven't even got a girlfriend, actually. I'm single. Have you got any brothers or sisters? No, I haven't. I'm an only child. Have you got any children? No. I don't think so, anyway. Just a joke. Do you live alone? Yes, I do. Now, I'd like to show you some pictures and ask you how you feel about yourself. Of these four, which animal are you? Are you a lion, a horse, a monkey, or a dog? Well, I'm not very brave, so I'm not a lion. I think I'm a dog. Yes, I'm very loyal and sociable, but only when I feel comfortable with people. So, a dog. Uh, how about these gemstones? In your opinion, which stone are you? Are you a pearl, a diamond, lapis lazuli, or jade? Mm. This is a difficult one. I think I'm a pearl because I'm a sensitive person. Now, don't tell me about your job. Name four objects that you've got at your place of work. The first four that come to mind. Scissors, water, 
a mirror, hairspray. You aren't a painter, but you are an artist of some kind, aren't you? You're a hairdresser. Oh, amazing! <laughs> Do I have to lie on the couch? It is better. I like to lie on the couch. Hi, here you are with me, Anthony, for a health and body session. Are you feeling energetic? Great, I am too. Let's start training then. Today, Ray meets a new patient, so he asks various questions to get his personal details and learn a little about his personality, his character. Let's go over some of those questions and have a look at the related vocabulary. Remember how they greet each other? Good morning. And Ray immediately makes the situation informal and more relaxed. He says, call me Ray. So, during their chat, what we call a relaxed, informal conversation, Ray asks John Little his full name. That is both his first name and his surname. His age. How old are you? He also asks him about his marital status. Are you married? A person can be single, like John, married, divorced, or widowed. What about asking about someone's brothers, sisters, or children, if they've got any? Have you got any brothers or sisters? Do you remember John's answer? He's an only child. That means he hasn't got any brothers or sisters. And then, have you got any children? Now, let's move on to some vocabulary. Ray asks John how he sees himself. He asks John to choose from four animals. Which animal are you? Which, because there is a limited choice, John can only choose from four animals. A lion, a horse, a monkey, and a dog. John says he's a dog because he's loyal. And dogs are very loyal animals. That's true. And because he's sociable with people he knows anyway. He isn't brave. That means courageous. So he says he isn't a lion. What about you? In your opinion, which animal are you? When we introduce our ideas, we say, I think, or in my opinion. Do you recall what other objects Ray asks John to choose from? That's right, four gemstones, pearl, diamond, lapis lazuli, and jade. And John says he's a pearl because he's sensitive. That means he's easily touched by things. So let's look at all those personality related adjectives we just mentioned. Loyal, sociable, brave, and sensitive. Well, that's all for today's workout. See you soon in the next training session. Mr. Little is 45. 
he's single, he hasn't got any children, and he's an only child. He says he's loyal, sociable with people he knows, and he's sensitive. He's easily touched by things. Hi, Al. It's Ray. Everything's fine. Are you still at work? So what time is the match? What do you mean, what match? The match. Arsenal against Chelsea. No, it's today. I'm sure it is. I've got the newspaper here. Yes, it is this evening, but there isn't a time. We're playing with a 4-4-2. And you know who the coach has got playing center forward? Can you believe it? He's not ready to play against Chelsea. They've got some strong players this season. No, I think he's too young to be in the running for such a position. He's a good player, but he needs more experience, in my opinion. And we're even playing with the reserve goalkeeper. Yes, he was injured last week in the match against Fulham. No, nothing serious, just a strain in his leg, but he's on the bench for two weeks, poor bloke. I just hope the pitch holds up with this heavy rain. Right. So, see you here at Emily's. So kickoff is probably at 7, but I'm not sure. So see you around 6, just in case. Ah, ah, right. All right. See you later. We love you, Arsenal. We do. We love you, Arsenal. We do. Arsenal, we love you. Same old dad. Welcome back. Today, our workout is all about football. Ray's excited about the football match. His team, Arsenal, is playing against Chelsea. We say a team play against another team. The noun team refers to a group of players, so it can either take a singular or plural verb. When the team is considered a single unit, it is common to use a singular verb. Arsenal plays against Chelsea. What about the players? The people that play a sport are called players. In this case, they are football players but we can also use the term footballers. Ray is surprised that the coach, the person who trains the players, has got such a young center forward playing in the match. Center forward is an important position and you need a strong player. Ray's worried that he doesn't have enough experience and he says he's too young to be in the running for such a position. Ray's also worried because they're playing with the reserve goalkeeper. The reserve is the substitute when a member from the team cannot play. In this case, the goalkeeper is injured. We say a player is injured when they hurt some part of their body. Arsenal's goalkeeper was injured in the match against Fulham last week. He's got a strain in his leg. This means he pulled a muscle. Very painful. 
So he's on the bench. He's out for two weeks. When a player is out, it means they cannot play for a period of time. How about when Ray says, we are playing with a 4-4-2. We call this a formation because it describes how the players are positioned on the pitch. 4-4-2 is a common formation today, but different formations can be used depending on whether the coach wants the team to play more attacking or defensive football. I just mentioned the pitch. This is the rectangular area where the game is played, the playing field. Ray wants to know when kickoff is. The kickoff is the start of the match. Let's hope he doesn't miss it. That's all for now. See you in the next workout. Keep training. Bye. Hello. Hi. What can I get you? Coffee? Tea? Tea, please. Milk and sugar? No milk, please, but sugar. Would you like anything to eat? A slice of chocolate cake? Some pastries? Tempting, but no thanks, just tea. Amazing! Who? Oh, I mean, what? Egypt! What an incredible place! Yes, it's fascinating. Are you interested in traveling? Oh, yes. I love traveling. I haven't got much time with the bar and everything, but there are so many places I'd like to visit. Do you travel a lot? Yes, I do. Lucky you. Have you got a lot of free time? Not really. I travel for my job. Oh, wonderful! What do you do? I'm a photographer. Are you? How interesting. Is this one of your pictures then? No, it isn't. But I know the photographer who took it. Do you work for a magazine? Sometimes. I work freelance, so I work for different magazines and newspapers, but I also work for a publishing company. I take pictures for their travel books and guides. Wow! <laughs> that sounds really interesting. You probably like traveling too, then. Yes, very much. In fact, I'm not often in London. I spend most of my time traveling. I've got a job to do in Chile, some pictures for a magazine. I'm going to be there for a few months, actually. Gosh! How I envy you. Do you want to come with me? <laughs> I wish. So why do you like traveling so much? Oh, for a million reasons. First of all, because it's fun and interesting to see the way people live in other countries. And I think it's important to have new experiences, to expose yourself to other cultures. Absolutely. I agree. Um, how much do I owe you for the tea? Oh, nothing. It's on the house. Well, thanks, uh, um... Emily. Thanks, Emily. My name is Archie. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Archie. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, welcome to your travel and entertainment workout. I'm Anthony, your personal trainer. So, are you ready to start practicing some English? Right. Emily serves a new client at the cafe, and they have a chat about their common interest in traveling. Let's have a quick look at how we take someone's order in a bar or a cafe, and then we can explore some of the expressions and vocabulary Emily and Archie used in their chat. So, let's say you come in to a cafe, and I am your waiter. I come and take your order and say, "Hello." What can I get you? Which is an informal way of asking what someone wants. Now, if you order a coffee, I can ask, "Milk and sugar." Or if you order tea, then I can ask, "Milk or lemon?" I like my tea with a slice of lemon. What about you? We call pieces of food that we cut and serve slices. For example, a slice of bread or a slice of chocolate cake. What about at the end when Archie wants to pay? Do you remember what Emily says? That's right. It's on the house. Now that means. That it's free. Okay, good. Now moving on to their chat about traveling. Are you interested in traveling? Well, Emily certainly is. We say we are interested in something. What are you interested in? Really. Now that's how we express surprise or interest in what someone is saying. Some other ways are amazing, or wonderful, incredible, fascinating. How interesting! That's what Emily says when she learns that Archie is a photographer. He says, "I'm a photographer," and to express her interest, she replies, "Are you? How interesting! I think Archie has got an interesting job too. He travels a lot for his job because he takes pictures all over the world. Do you travel for your job?" We also use the preposition for to say who we work for. Archie works for magazines and newspapers, and he works for a publishing company. He works for a lot of people because he works freelance. That means he hasn't got a permanent position in one company. But he works independently, and sells his work to various companies. Going back to traveling, can you remember some adjectives Emily uses to express her opinions about traveling? Interesting, fun, important. She says it's important to have new experiences. Absolutely, I agree. Don't you? Well, take care for now, and see you in our next training session. Bye. Is that for me? No, it's for Mum. She's on her way here. She usually comes in for a drink after work on Fridays. Oh, what day is it today? Friday. No, it isn't. It's Thursday. Oh yeah. 
Well, she sometimes comes in on Thursdays, too. Really? So today isn't a special occasion? I don't think so. What month is it? November. <laughs> Et voila! You know, Lucy, the martini is more than just a cocktail. It's an American icon. And the preferred drink of such luminaries as Franklin D. Roosevelt, Jack London, and Ernest Hemingway, it celebrates the American dream. Yes, and Winston Churchill liked it too. But we are in the 21st century. It's Happy November. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh my God. I am so sorry, Lucy. I completely uh -huh. forgot. Yes. Oh, Emily. Happy birthday, Lucy. Thanks. <laughs> Presents. Thanks, Mom. Is this for me? Yes. Oh. I really am so sorry. Is it already the 20th of November? Yes, dear. And as punishment, you have to wear this hat. <laughs> <laughs> and make me a James Bond martini. Three parts gin, one part vodka, and a touch of dry kinalile. Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> With a twist of lemon. <laughs> Hi there, time for our workout. And this time, we're looking at vocabulary and expressions related to days of the week, months, and dates. Poor Lucy, her sister forgot her birthday. But she doesn't seem too upset. She receives a lot of presents anyway from her mom. I think Emily feels worse than she does. I always feel terrible when I forget someone's birthday, don't you? My birthday is in April. We use the preposition in with months. In February. In July. When's your birthday? Is it in November, like Lucy's? Lucy's is on the 20th of November, or, as they say in America, November 20th. We always use an ordinal number to say the date. The 18th of April. That's my birthday. Don't forget it. My brother's birthday is on the 2nd of March. Remember the ordinal numbers for 1, 2, and 3 are 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So we also say 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So, what's the date today? And what day of the week is it? Miranda usually goes for a drink at Emily's bar on Fridays. But Lucy reminds Emily that it's Thursday. I usually go out with friends on Saturdays because we stay out until late and I don't have to get up early on Sunday morning. But I often go for a drink during the week, too. On Tuesdays, not on Wednesdays, because I have yoga on Wednesday evening. Now, going back to Lucy's birthday, do you remember what cocktail she asks Emily to prepare a martini.
like the one James Bond drinks. Three parts gin, one part vodka, and a touch of dry Kina Lille, which is a French aperitif wine. Sounds strong. And she likes it shaken, not stirred, with a twist of lemon. That's a classic line from James Bond films. Well, that's all we have time for today. See you soon for our next workout.